Today we're going to talk about The Hundred Dresses by Eleanor Estes. First, we're going to talk a little bit about the author. The author's father died when she was young, and so her mom supported her through making dresses. And her mother was known as a great storyteller, and that's what Eleanor Estes really remembered about her. And growing up with this love of stories, Eleanor Estes became a librarian. And back when Estes lived in the nineteen, you know, mid nineteen hundreds, TB, which stands for tuberculosis, it's a big coughing lung um, issue, was a um, a real problem. And she became very sick and was in bed, and she started writing. And Eleanor Estes went on to write just, I don't remember how many, but she's got some great books and I just really challenge you to check out. She's got books about the Moffats. She's got all of the kind family. Um, this book is fantastic. Anyway, so read more by this author. Um, so this book in particular, The Hundred Dresses, is based on her childhood experience. Eleanor Estes was, you know, the poor child of a widow, who, um, you know, made dresses, and she, Eleanor, spent her childhood trying to hide how poor she was and to fit in and that sort of thing. Meanwhile, one of her classmates was getting made fun of, and Eleanor re um, expresses regret that she never helped out this classmate because she was always afraid she would get made fun of too. And so that is the personal experience it's that that um, is the catalyst for this story. Okay, I want to sort of talk about characterization a little bit for a second. That is one of the main things in a book. And th the reason is this characterization in this book is tricky. So I want to talk about the character of Wanda. But before I even talk about her, I want to say um, almost consider her part of the setting. And although you'll see Wanda, Wanda, Wanda throughout the book, she actually is not a character in this book. And in fact, if you look carefully, Wanda is never in the book. She has already moved from the very beginning of the book. And um, she is, is just, you know, a symbolic character where the other characters can develop and we can see their personalities based on hers. Um... The other thing that I find interesting, though, is creating Wanda as part of the setting also shows more about this theme of bullying or being cliquish or excluding others. She's not even a character in her own book. She's just part of the setting. She's a nothing, a nobody. Um, so that also farthers the plot and helps us to see this theme better that poor Wanda is not even in her own book. Okay, so Wanda is the only Polish-American girl in the class. She's probably the very poorest. Um, she's excluded. She also doesn't have a mother, so she's washing her own dress every day and that sort of thing. And um, sits in the back of the room, her feet are muddy. And that is Wanda. The setting is sort of any school in a small town about 75 years ago. It's it's not trying to be specific because the author, Eleanor Estes, wants you to be able to realize the setting is where you live and where you go to school, too. You know, it can go anywhere. So the plot is Wanda is completely ignored, part of the setting, as I said, until she claims she has 100 dresses. And then Peggy leads all the other girls in the class to make fun of her. And ha, 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 she has a hundred dresses. And Maddie is Peggy's best friend. And this really upsets her and worries her. And that is where the conflict of the book comes in. This conflict is man versus himself, or in this case, Maddie versus herself. She never confronts, Maddie never confronts Peggy. Wanda, like I said, is not even in the book for the conflict to be between Peggy and Wanda. The huge issue and problem is Maddie trying to deal with her own emotions as Peggy makes fun of Wanda. Okay, so 
this conflict in this section of the book is that Maddie's thinking, maybe I should just write a note, because I know I'd never talk to Peggy in person, and tell Peggy, please stop making fun of Wanda. And she's too cowardly to even do that. So Maddie is not a happy camper this entire book because of what's going on. And really, though, while we wanted to say, oh, she's so worried about Wanda, her real concern is that Maddie is also poor. And Maddie gets her dresses from Wanda. Okay, and then Maddie's mom puts on some new lace or changes this or that, so nobody realizes that Maddie's wearing one, not Wanda, I'm sorry, Peggy's hand-me-down dresses, all right? So that is the issue, is that Maddie wants all of this teasing to stop because she's afraid that she's next, but she won't do anything about it because she's afraid maybe that'll start everybody with teasing her. So she has a lot of conflict out of her. So once again, the theme here is is what we could call bullying or excluding others or having cliques or gossip or, you know, all sorts of those type of social vices. Um, And so one of the ways that this theme is expressed is through um, a literary thing called repetition. Okay? And this device is to just repeat the same phrase. And in this part of the book, it's to have some fun with her. And so Peggy keeps saying she wants to have some fun with Wanda, but she doesn't really want to have some fun with Wanda. She wants to make fun of her. And so um, it's kind of a play on words as well. And when we are interacting with others, we have to figure out, is this fun for everybody or fun for just me? Or is this fun for the majority of us? of us, but makes somebody feel awful. And if that's the case, you're looking at bullying. Okay. So the, I think it's the first chapter ends with the class talking about or the Gettysburg address. And, um, this is a little, um, allusion to, um, Abraham Lincoln at the end of World World War II. Oh, okay. At the end of the Civil War. Sorry, guys. At the end of the Civil War, um, made the Gettysburg Address, which is one of the best speech. I urge you to memorize it. My kids have. And it's really good. And it's at the end, it says, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Okay? And so this this is being recited in this school, but meanwhile, this school isn't fun for everyone, especially the new immigrant of Wanda who gets made fun of because her last name is different, because she talks a little funny, you know, all sorts of goofy stuff, okay? And that's not what our nation is about. And so when we are saying things like the Gettysburg Address, it's not just history. This is things that speak to us today, okay? So we don't want to have fought the Civil War and had these people died in vain. We want freedom and government for the people, and do not let that perish off the earth or in your classroom, a thinking activity. So in this part of the book, it's, it's sort of more focused on what makes Wanda the, the brunt of all the jokes. Okay. So I want to ask you, what makes the people that are outcasts where you are, what makes them the outcast? Okay. And, um, when we talk about Wanda, you know, you, you, you do kind of go, why did she say she had a hundred dresses? And um, I, I think that, you know, she was an outcast no matter what. That was her trying to say something. Everybody's talking about dresses and trying to add to it when she doesn't have any address besides the blue one and things like that. So um, once somebody's already an outcast, do realize it's really hard for them to say anything right. And how could you help? How, what could Maddie have pulled 
Wanda aside and said, hey, Wanda, let's, let's talk about this. Do you really have a hundred dresses? Oh, they're, you know, they're just, um, drawings. Well, let's, let's, you know, talk to people about it. You know, she could have helped her to fit in. Okay. But she didn't because Maddie was worried about being an outcast herself. Are there any things that you worry about with yourself that might make you an outcast? Something, you know, could be that you're like Wanda from a different place or that maybe your family's a little different or, you know, something, anything, um, and that you worry about being an outcast. Okay. Um, so when you are, have that worry, I think that is why Maddie won't help Wanda. All right. And so don't let your own fears keep you from doing the right thing. Okay. You don't want to join um, a bully in doing bad things because you're afraid to do the right thing. Okay. So I want you just to think about who do you know that needs a friend and what are you going to do? How are you going to be their friend? And, um, stop start ending there being an outcast and feeling alone and always saying the wrong thing because you can help them and don't worry about whether or not that makes you an outcast I can tell you a quick personal story that that always stuck with me one of my kids had a transient um sort of physical characteristic that would make him prone to maybe getting picked on and we had to go to the doctor, and I asked the doctor, what about if the other kids make fun of him? And the doctor says, everybody always asks me this. And I said, well, yeah. And he said, you know what I always tell them? I'm like, no, please tell me. And this old doctor, he said, you know, there might be the few bullies that pick on him, and he'll learn real quick to stay away from them. And then the majority of the kids will just sort of leave them alone. Maybe, you know, you call the outcast or whatever. And then there'll be a few kids that will overlook this and, and just be his friend and come alongside him. And he said, when you look at it this way, he said, this is the biggest blessing this kiddo ever had, that quickly he's going to be able to distinguish who are the bad guys and stay away from them who are the normal people that you know kind of just care about themselves and who are the good guys and he will be surrounding himself with them and that ended up being so true and in a way was such a blessing that way so quit worrying you don't want to be friends with bullies anyway and start doing the right thing and being that friend for somebody else in that situation.